Hey, this is Ray Bailey from the Author and Chains podcast. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on building an EPUB cover. Uh, first, let's talk about the tools we use. Uh, like in our last tutorial, we're still using the Adobe Creative Cloud. As I said, it's about $49 a month, but it has so many tools that you'll end up using, both for creating graphics, covers, maybe even videos, that it tends to be a good investment to get, especially if you're doing a lot of your own marketing. Um, in this case, we're going to use Fireworks. Uh, I tend to find it easier, uh, a lot more manageable to use than Photoshop, but I will also do a Photoshop. Uh, uh, before we even start, I'd like to talk a little bit about covers. Covers are critical when dealing with books. Like anything else, covers tend to draw in the, draw in the, the, the user. <clears throat> they see the cover, and that's usually what catches them before they say anything else. The title, the, the review... So a cover is just as critical as your content. So in choosing a cover, always remember that. Um, an engaging picture or an engaging word set on the cover will draw fans in to allow them to experience your book. So in this case, we're going to start with a cover template, which is uh, 1,600 pixels by 2,400 pixels, which is the recommended size for covers. Now, from here, you can actually go, you know, smaller cover, bigger cover, depending on how you need to resize it for whichever service. But building it like this gives you a good base to start with. So we're going to run at about 25% because we can't view the whole thing. Viewing the whole thing at 100% is huge. Um, the cover itself is a high definition file that's used by the services to show your book. So from here, let's get a little familiar with the tools we've got. Now right here is our canvas right in the middle. This canvas is obviously where we're going to have our book. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have your tools. Tools are basically what you use to grab, drag, and drop, uh, cut, crop, color. If you mouse over any tool, it actually tells you what it is, which is always good to have, especially with getting used to things. On the right-hand side, the biggest piece you'll end up using is your layers. These are allow you to stack different graphics you're doing so that way you can create something. Um, think of it as window panes of glass allowing you to put something on a pane and then another pane in front of it. That way you can remove a pane and still have most of the picture available. Below is the properties. Properties allow you to kind of edit different items you've put on the, uh, the canvas. So let's start. The first thing I've already done is I've already gone out and scoured the internet for rights free or rights managed paid that I pay for because I have a couple of services picture that I would want for the cover. So I've went out and find one and sometimes it takes a while. Hold on, let me get to the cover piece. So in this case we're using a single picture. This is the picture we're going to use for our cover and I'm making it very simplistic because I'm trying to be, uh, for the tutorial, I didn't want to get too complex. So in this case, I'm going to copy this picture, and I'm going to paste it on our cover. This is our background of our first layer. Now in this case, I'm going to right-click, and you can use transform functions to kind of skew the picture, scale it, uh, flip it, whatever you wanted to do. You know, if I wanted to, to flip it vertically, vertically, Sorry, with the recording, the graphics program gets a little slow. It allows me to flip it. That way I can have it upside down if I really wanted to. But in this case, we won't. So, I'm going to take this picture and I'm going to kind of blow it up a little bit for our cover. go. I've taken the picture, I've kind of blown it up. Now what I want to do is I've got this top and bottom up here which aren't covered with anything. So I'm going to actually go back to the main canvas, which is transparent, 
and down in the properties I'm going to click that little color panel and in this case I'm going to match it which is not quite a black just a little off but that will let me and see we've already got a and kind of matching it's not always easy so there's another way we have to do it if we come out with that can I find a match for that nope it's going to come out looking weird so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to take the top of this one right across here this blank area and I'm going to cut it so what I've chosen on the left hand side is that cropping tool which is right there and I've now outlined an area. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to crop that. So, and what I'm also going to do is crop that down a little bit again. Alright, so here we go. Now we have cropped it. So I've got an area of the background. That means I don't have to worry about trying to match and swath that color. I can come back to mine. Hold on. One of the things I am going to do is I'm going to kind of see I've, I'm cropping the, the same thing I've chosen to crop over here and I'm cropping that picture on the book because I don't need all that extra stuff we don't see so there we go I'm still working on that bitmap background layer but now I can copy this piece over alright and I'm going to copy it again, control C on my keyboard, drag down a copy of it. Well, actually it didn't let me do that. Look at that. So there we go. So let's do this the old fashioned way and right click copy. Edit paste. Now I've copied it. Now I'll bring it down. And one of the things I'll do as I'm doing this is I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to right click it again, transform, flip vertically and turn it upside down. There we go. Now sometimes you see how you get that, that unmatch in there. Oh, we never like that. Sometimes you need to play around with it to get that thing to match a little better. Alright, so there we have the top and bottom now covering the whole book. I've now selected all, all those pieces I was just working with and I'm going to go up here to modify at the top and I'm going to flatten selection. What that do is turns all of those little picture pieces into one picture because that's my background picture. So now I have a background. Now I'm going to zoom in real quick because I want to take a look at this and make sure it looks good because it's one of the things you got to remember if you're looking at a picture now you can see right there where you got a little bit of a difference. So I'm going to come over here on the left and I'm going to fudge it a little bit it'll allow it to blend a little better. So there's a, there's a blur tool on the left hand toolbar that I will click and it gives me this blur tool. So now I can actually come in here and just like you would a picture I can kind of smudge that line out which allows these two to blend. So now I'm making that one picture that blends better. So there's not that line that breaks up the site. See now I'm able to kind of say, hey look, I got a cool picture. Alright. I'm going to do the same thing up top if I need to. So we check it. That means I scroll back and forth and I see if I see areas that look like it breaks the sight line. Because people will notice things like that in your book, especially with print. So I check up top. You see I got the same thing here right where the sight line set is. So all I'm going to do is just kind of go over it. just like that. And breaking out that just getting rid of that single line. All the all the colors match, it's just because there's like a, a, a random texture and pattern it, it tends to have that hard line through it. Alright, so there we go. Hard line is now gone. We have now dealt with our background image. So here is the background image of our EPUB. I am going to come over here on the right hand side and right down here at the bottom of the layers in a little page with a plus button I'm going to create a new layer and there's my new layer I'm going to name our existing layer I'm going to call it wolf background and then our 
our new layer, which now I'm gonna get it again, I'm gonna call title. So there we go. Now we're gonna throw a title up on this book. So just over here on, on that on that right hand side, I just chose a text tool on that left hand side toolbar, and now I've gone over here and clicked on the canvas in my text layer. I can put call it uh, we'll just call it Wolfman. Now the text, as you can see, is really small. So I'm going to go down to properties down here, and I'm going to use a little slide tool and make it bigger. Now that doesn't make it big enough. So you can actually edit the numbers yourself. And in this case, I'm going to edit the numbers. So to make it at least usable so I can look at it. Now, I, obviously, I'm not going to use purple for the color, nor am I going to use that font. So first thing I'm going to do now that I got that text is I'm going to go look for a font I can use. Now, one of the nice things about the font is you get a little preview of it next to it. So I've got all these nifty fonts. Let's see what we want to use. Give me a second. I'll find one that looks naturally decent. Uh, let's see. for a particular font so I'm thinking and the nice thing about fonts is you can go online and find many sites use something like Google or Yahoo and just Google free fonts and there are so many of them you can find and in this case we're gonna use a, a font called Cenobite which gives it kind of that cool look all right so now, now that I know what my font is, I can actually size this properly. But first, I kind of want to choose a color that's not going to be purple. Um, in this case, I'll kind of choose the red, and I'm going to up that font even more. Actually, what I'm going to do is, one of the nice things about properties is many different things you can do with even text. I'm going to space out those, those words. There we go. So now I've spaced them, as well as change the font. Um, I'm going to actually, you know what, we're going to make that black. I'm going to show you a little trick. So now the font's black. I'm going to go down here where it says filters in the bottom in that properties area, and I'm going to choose glow. And what it's going to do is it's going to then glow my text, just like that. So I'm going to choose just a little bit lighter red to make it pop. see which one I want to do there we go and now I've got my title and gave it kind of a cool look with that glowing text so now we have a cool title um, now I can edit that and make the glow bigger you know because obviously we want to make sure that title pops when people look at it so I can actually come down here and what I would honestly tell you to do is play with this stuff. A lot of these settings, a lot of these properties, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to break it. You get a chance to kind of see what they do. Um, you know, all the little envelope pieces within the, uh, like, glow and drop shadow and things like that. <clears throat> Always work with them because they tend, to, they tend to let you do a lot of editing and a lot of customization, just like I did with that one. So we're going to go back over here to the right. We're going to do one more layer. And we're going to call this layer Author. Now one of the nice things I can do with layers, and one of the reasons I separate them out, is I can lock layers. So the background I'm done with. I no longer need to mess with the background. And then you get the Wolfman, the title, I no longer actually have to touch. So if I come over here, I can't touch any of those. I no longer can edit them because I've locked them. Hold on. I've also lost my new layer. And if you don't use a layer, it kind of goes away. So we're going to call this author. And now I'm going to come down here and grab this. And I will put the author by John Smith. So let me highlight that with a little control A. 
and let me bring that font down because we don't want the author so big. And I'm also going to make the author white. That way the stands out. And then we're going to change the font to something more normal because we don't need to have John Smith, you know, the same as the, the title. We want that title to pop. So we want a unique font. <coughs> I'm going to come up here to my fonts. And I'm going to choose usually one of the basic ones, like Arial or Avenir, or one of those that are the standard fonts you put for displaying just text. So in this case, I will make that. Hold on. Obviously, I put another extra capital one. There we go. So now I have John Smith. And I am going to center him. Now, if you look, as I move stuff around, it'll tell you a little guideline up here which shows you, hey, center. You've now centered, you know, that particular object. So I'm going to grab that one one more time, and I'm going to spread out the author just to make it kind of, you know, easier to read on my part. I tend to like to spread out text a little bit when I'm dealing with titles because it just makes it easier to read when somebody's walking up to it or seeing it quickly. Um, and I'm going to have to grab it again now that I've done that. And you see where that guideline appears that shows me where I'm at. We now have a title for a book with an author shown. This is how you make an EPUB. The size of the actual book is huge because these are high-res files they use, as I said. So this is what it looks like when you zoom in on it to 100%. That's why we only work with it at about 25%. So, thank you for joining me today. This is how you do an EPUB title uh, or an EPUB cover. From here, you can actually come out and do an image preview and export it as any type of file you would need. Um, that is one of the nice things about these programs is it has its own source save, like a PNG file for fireworks. But then you can come over here and make a JPEG or a GIF or whatever that particular service like Amazon accepts. And again, thank you for joining me. Hope to catch up with you on the uh, podcast.